Hello everybody and welcome to LMM and it's now time for another episode of Laurie Goes A Little Loco. Uh, if you look down just over here that will be our social media coming up on the screen. Today we're taking a new adventure and looking at something that we've not covered before on the channel. Today we're looking at miniatures running on seven and a quarter inch gauge which you may have guessed from the, the fact you can just see it at my feet. Today we're here at a railway that's been built during lockdown. Yes that's right this crazy project is the result of one man's ambition to have a railway running his garden and has taken advantage of not being able to go out. So let's uh, have a look at what we're dealing with today. Behind me in this shed lies today's locomotive and it will be the first locomotive that I've got in and driven since lockdown started and for somebody who is regularly volunteering on the footplate and as you guys have seen in Laurie Goes Loco regularly driving locomotives it has been the longest period in my living memory that I've not been on a locomotive. So suffice to say, I'm extremely excited to take even a miniature locomotive out for a drive. And this is it. So I imagine one of your first questions is, what exactly are we dealing with here? Because it looks a little strange. This is a seven and a quarter inch gauge locomotive and it's roughly based on a Japanese locomotive that the owner saw when browsing the internet and went that's a kind of interesting shape I could use that so it's kind of based around I think they run on meter gauge over there locomotive and so it kind of scales up at being 24 inches wide and about 10 foot long it kind of works the scale kind of scaled up kind of it's, it's, a, it's a loose scale the second thing to add is you may have already guessed this, but this is not the finished livery. The, the white and the blue arrows and blue lines, that is just the protective cover for the aluminium. This is built out of aluminium. And as the owner is still working on it, he's decided that painting it would be a rather silly move while he's still modifying everything. So I suppose the next question is, why has he built a locomotive? And the obvious answer is, well, why not? Well, the gentleman in question is actually quite clever. He was in bomb defusal for the RAF. And he is quite good at mending things, which is how I know him, because he's come and fixed my things quite often. And evidently, he's quite good at building things. The story behind this was that he built a locomotive for a society who needed a powerful engine that you could sit in, but would run on their seven and quarter inch gauge railway to pull visitors to the museum. And he went, I could build one of those and he enjoyed the process so much that once he had finished it and perfected that design he decided to sit down and make a better one for himself. When he started this he did not have a railway to run it on. His plan was to transport it to railways and run it there. In fact somewhere around here there is a trailer he built to put it on to take it behind his car. And then lockdown happened and he just happened to have a load of rail kicking around from another project and lot of sleepers. And so now, now we have a railway. So obviously this is still a work in progress. Things to be added to it are windows to go into here and sliding windows to go in the side. Because that will make it a bit, bit nicer to be in. And then obviously the paint. However, some of the cool things it has, it has these brushes fitted here for the whole cab to slide forward like this. And then one can easily fit in and sit inside. The other cool thing is here we have a little latch and the whole chair pivots so that you can face the B end or the A end. And the control unit here will unplug and fit in this way so you can drive it facing both ways, which is actually pretty cool. But we'll have a, a look at the controls in a minute. So powering this little thing, you might see the exhaust pipe here, which is a, a little deceptive We tip this forward and behold, we see the power plant inside, which is, well, two 12 volt batteries slaved together to be a 24 volt system. And here we have the generator. So when we're running, we can continually charge up the batteries so it can run for, well, much longer than it would do on just a single charge. And this is a special Honda suitcase generator and it's a well desired by particularly caravanners because it's super quiet. It's one of the most quiet generators they've built, making only 79 decibels of noise. 
And as somebody used to work in film with generators a lot, I can tell you that is exceptionally quiet. So how do we actually get power? Well, batteries and motors down there on the bogies. So obviously a generator is going to make some exhaust. So inside the bonnet here, we've got a little bit of an arrangement to help take the exhaust gas away so that it doesn't suffocate us in there, especially when the, the Perspex windows gets put in. The rest of the wiring here, well, these are just two battery charges, which plug into that, which keeps those topped up. So this little thing, we put that back on gently. We think this weighs somewhere around 350 kg to 400. Not really sure, somewhere in that ballpark and it will reach a rapid top speed of six miles an hour, which when you're low to the ground on an error gauge, that's a terrifyingly high top speed. So the big question I imagine on everybody's mind at this point is just how much effort does it take to make a locomotive like this? And the answer is surprisingly little because as I mentioned before, the gentleman who built this is quite clever and believe it or not, from actually cutting the metal and starting to getting it together into a locomotive in this rough shape took him about a month which is pretty good go now that's not to say that that was immediate success whilst kind of the body shape has stayed about the same and the chassis has stayed about the same the bogies are now on their second redesign and about to go in for a third redesign to get them just right but that's still pretty good going and the most impressive thing is the main cost on this were laser cutting the bogies and just getting the metal work to make the rest of it. All in, he thinks he spent about a hundred quid to make an engine. That's a ludicrously good value. Coming back to the cab, which is admittedly slightly overscaled to actually allow you to get inside. Size back like this. So a quick guide to all the controls. First of all, we've got the throttle here, which is a, a pullback design, and with that you'll go. Underneath there, we have a bicycle brake, which works as brakes, and it is quite effective. Moving here, we've got some controls. We've got headlights controls here for forward and for the ones at the back, and then a confusing switch here, which we'll come to in a minute. The switch here is forward and backwards. One is that way for the number one end. Two is the number two end that way. Because the controller for this was taken off a mobility buggy, the backwards on them normally is half speed because some people can't reverse. So the switch here is the original one of the motor buggy. By pressing that, you reverse it, but you only have half speed. So we don't really need that anymore unless you want to have it in crawl mode, which I'm told I don't need. So we're just going to forget that one exists. The other cool functions we have in here are here. There's a little voltmeter telling me how much power or how many volts I've got left in the battery. And as soon as we start going, that ticks over and tells me how much the motors are drawing. We have two gauges here and here, which show me how many amps they're taking and the voltage as well that's going to both the motors. So I can see what both my motors are doing, which is a very useful thing. And here we have a little speedo, which is connected to the rear axle. And it's a bicycle one, so you know, you've got a magnet that goes around. That's very cool too. So this is all cool. As I showed you earlier, the seat turns around so you can go into the back and there's a little door that opens this side to allow you to get in otherwise you can't swing your legs in especially if you're tall like I am. The other kind of cool thing about this is it's designed to be worked on so this arm here will come off and then you can just lift the seat out which allows you to access the floor and the rear bogey. Nothing is in the way it's quite clever. Speaking of the control arm here is now in its fourth generation of design and the owner is about to begin redesigning it again. As you can see, there's a couple of things in it where in a previous life, it's had other functions and other bits added to it. And it's been evolved through its time. And the owner has now kind of got it, he got it down. He knows what he wants with it now. So he's gonna remake this and just make it a bit more tidy and a bit nicer. So with that all looked at, I suppose the most pressing thing is just what is it like to go for a drive and allow me to go and take a locomotive out for the first time since lockdown? So lifting up the handle, making it easy to get in. Oh. It is surprisingly stable. Like getting into something that's, yeah, I'm 24 inches wide in this and the track is only seven and a quarter. I feel quite stable. Next thing I quite like is that there's a handy handle up here. Oh. And that now clips in. 
and it makes it feel really proper being inside. It's, it's much more than a model. This is a miniature locomotive. Being encased in it makes it, makes it real being in the cab. So the next thing to do is select number two, make sure the brake is off, and gently, oh, I forgot one thing. It's loud. He went overboard when he found the horn. It's the same kind of horn that's on my Ruston. And then gently put the power down and away we go. Now I've got a little mirror here so I can see what's behind me without having to twist all around. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> So here we are at the far end of the line, which is next door to the three and a half inch gauge running line. So we will put it into gear and go. Quick blast of the horn. God, that's loud. And away we go. It is quite loud. And by quite loud, I mean very loud. <laughs> because I'm sat right in the middle, it's a really weird sensation that you kind of pivot around the track. There's a bit of a rock there, and that's that's strange because it, it it does rock a little bit this engine. But uh, as a sensation of actually going for a drive, this is marvellous. It's so fun just to be back on a railway. As we get here, the railway curves quite steeply round the back. I like that. And a bit of a bump there. And now we can open it up and reach a heady speed of five miles an hour before we get to the current end of the railway. This is as far as it goes at the moment. So the plans are to extend it for more than double the length. So at the moment, that's as far as we go. <laughs> Frankly, that was quite good fun. Now, we're now heading backwards, and I could have turned everything round to look that way, but I've got a little mirror there, so I can just keep an eye out that way, and this is fine. Things I particularly like about this, as there are no windows, my elbow just rests out the side of the cab, and that is delicious. Things I don't like are remembering how steep this bend is, and it's just a drop down there, down into the ditch. So that's nice and slow around there. Now, it's strange because it feels actually pretty sturdy for something that is this wide, you know, with like twice, it's true there, twice the width of the track, more than, yeah, more than, three times as wide. And you know what? This thing feels really sturdy. And the fact that I've got this bonnet stretching out in front of me, it just makes it feel a lot bigger. It makes it feel like a proper locomotive. Keep an eye out for that, the stop behind us. Gotta make the most of the line run. This thing's great. I want one. Again, considering this thing was built in a month and the track has been built during lockdown, the owner has done the most amazing job. And frankly, yes, it's a little bit silly. I'm going with that. But I am enjoying it so much. It's so nice to be on board a little locomotive. And I love here, I've got the information being shown to me about what the motors are doing. And it's just brilliant. Lights on as we go. Oh. It's a super piece of kit. And so controllable. I've got my hand tucked in under the armrest. One thumb on the throttle. That's all I have to do. Thumb on the throttle. And it's brilliant. Just thumb control and then I reach down to put the brake on. It's brilliant. Also, the owner kind of said how this curve here is very tight, and it is. But nothing complains going around. The loco just rumbles around quite happily. Basically, a bit more power is needed. So, 
one of the things I'd really like to see is I'd like to see this on a train. I'd like to see how much you'll actually pull. And I know the owner's got some plans to take it to other societies and actually do some things with it and see just how good it is. And also, really, I want lockdown to continue a little bit longer so that he can complete his railway and go a bit further than here. Because as we go around that section there, I really get the sense of, I want to be going faster, I want to be going further. That's, that's a nice mainline straight that we've just entered onto. But as we head back, guys, basically this is showing you what you can achieve in the, the smaller scales, well, the larger of the model scales, I guess. But something you can do for not that much money, admittedly a lot of engineering know-how, but you can build a locomotive and have a railway in a deceptively small space and small amount of time. This is great. It's amazing what you can achieve on a rather limited budget with not much time and not a huge amount of space. That tree has got me twice. That, that needs to be cut. That definitely needs work. It's just... It's magnificent. Now, obviously, there are things that this needs doing to make it absolutely superb. You know, there's, there's things that are that are lacking, things that need improving, like the glass going in. Well, all things considered, it's such an amazing piece of kit. I'm so happy to be back on a locomotive having a drive. It's, it's been far too long. I am, um, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. I definitely want to wag it. Part of the plan that the owner has for the future is he wants to put a little tanker onto it and have it as a weed killing train. So you can actually do something on your service. I think that'd be great. So yes, I would have something like this in my garden. This is quite good fun. It's, it's big enough not to feel silly. Sometimes, you know, if you drive a, a very small locomotive, you feel a bit silly, you feel a bit out of scale. Whereas this, this is quite pleasant. This is something I'm really enjoying, just trundling around here, not doing anything too much, just having a nice trundle. So, that's about it. It's comfortable to be in. It's a lovely way to just potter around for afternoon and not really do anything. So that's just what I'm going to do. Spend the rest of my afternoon just pottering about, probably muck around with trains. So guys, if you've enjoyed this and you would like to see me attacking more of the bigger scales of Lorigo's Little Loco, actually being more locomotives that I can ride on and ride behind. Let us know in the comments if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see more of. I have had a lot of offers of similar things, so if, if you want to see it, then it's something that can happen. A, a massive thank you to the owner and builder of this railway and the locomotive, the yet unnamed locomotive. Give us some ideas for names in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share this video with your miniature monorail railway friends and uh, leave a comment be involved remember we've got our discord and various other social media so there's plenty of ways for you guys to get involved with us here at lmm and with that guys thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed this kind of thing and you'd like to see some more model railways how about clicking over there and if you want to see me do a review on a full-size proper locomotive how about clicking over there thanks for watching guys i'm gonna go enjoy driving this around for the rest of my afternoon. See you later.